Hi, we've been talking about the ways where we are still affected by popularity and why popularity is so important. And previously we talked about the ways that it might be really be built into our how brains are set up and even our how DNA respond and is expressed. But I want to move on by talking a little bit about how popularity is affecting each and every one of us actually thousands of times a day. Especially we are going to talk about how your experiences with popularity when you we we are younger affect a lot of the ways that we think about our social experiences but before we do that i'd like to for you to watch this video just watch the video and you are going to be asked to say a little bit about what you saw in the video so watch carefully so what we are going to talk about how was uh, been studied by psychologists for many years and it's referred to as social information processing. Nikki Creek and Ken Dodge were among the first to develop a model. It's really a way to take in every single social experience you have and zoom in it into down super slow mode. If you were to try and think about all of the tiny little unconscious processes, uh, they are happening between the moment that you see something to the moment uh, that you respond. You will divide them up into a few different steps. So the first thing that happens is that there's an event. This could be a big event, like someone breaks up with you, or it could be a tiny little event, like you are walking through a crowd and someone haunts on you very subtle it turns out that in order for us to respond that to that that event there are many little steps that happen and the first one of whether or not we encode that event so for instance if you are working through a crowd and someone nodded on you you might not even notice it you might be looking at somebody else or you might be looking at your phone answering emails or you might be assuming that no one is interested in looking to you so you don't really even attempt to what happens. It's very common for professors to talk about teaching in their class and whether uh, they are noticing all of the students that are looking to at them and kind of nodding. Uh, they really tend to focus on just those students that are looking down and clearly are going Facebook while they are lecturing. And that's a really great example of cue encoding. The idea that they tend to even just notice something um, more than others and actually don't even see the other things in their visual field at, at all. Well, once we see something, once we've encountered something and we've said that our brain has brought it to some attention to us, then we have to interrupt uh, what is we seen or heard or felt. And we call that cue interpretation. And there are many different ways that we might interpret uh, what if we just encode it. And we'll talk about uh, them more in just a second. Well, after we've interpreted something, then again, really fast and consciously, we don't even realize that we are doing it. We then decide what is our goal, uh, what we are hoping to achieve in this particular situation. And that becomes an important step called goal clarification. Once we have a goal, we come up uh, with a variety of possible things uh, that we could do to respond. We select one of those responses. Again, super fast. Uh, we are not even aware we are going into, and then we follow through on that with response enactment. So, in other words, uh, we decide to act out what it is that we say, that we thought whether that we want to do, and once we respond, then after produces a new event. So, for instance, if this all started by someone nodding at you and you end up deciding to turn it back, that might lead to them waving or saying hey or something like that. If you notice instead to do something rude to them, that might lead to some sort of event where it will start a whole new cycle. And it happens again and again. Well, all of this happens based on you of all of our prior experiences. So every single experience that we have socially is stored in a database. And there is actually a good brain research to say that when we look at how people respond to things, it often is involving centers of our brain involved in after biological memory. Particularly, as it turns out, experiences with popularity is a way to understand how every social experience happens to us every single day to day. And sometimes we think about these steps, steps are very, very explicit. 
We'll talk about that in a second, but first let's talk about an example where we might see this play out and I'm going to show you three different pretend people and how they might respond to a similar event. So for instance, imagine for someone walks by, then look at you, then smile and they giggle a little bit. Well, imagine that in a cue encoding step, the first person might look at that and say, I just saw a person laughing at me. Okay, so they, because of their database, say they really attended to the laughing. Uh, the second person might say, I just saw a person make eye contact and smile. So they didn't really remember the laughing as much. These studies, they showed that if you ask them later, they might not even recall that that happening. Or they might uh, not even notice it. But they are really noticing their eye contact and the smile. And the third person uh, may be the kind of person that doesn't believe that anyone would ever smile at them. They have a lifetime of rejection or feeling that they never noticed by anybody. They are studies show the less likely to even notice when people do look at them. So they might not even notice anybody. Well, the next step that will happen then is cue interpretation. So uh, that first person might say, I think that person was making fun of me. I saw them kind of laughing. And my automatically thought, uh, the thing I immediately associate with that is, I think they were teasing me somehow. But maybe the second person who kind of was really enticing the eye contact and the smile might interpret that by saying, oh, I think maybe that person flirting by me. And of course, the third person who didn't even see anybody will probably say that, what person? I don't even know what you're talking about. So that's the end of them. The next step would be goal clarification. So if you believe that someone has just teased you, that first person might say, well, in this situation I want to assert my dominance. I really want to make sure that people don't tease me and they, ha they, they know how uh, they are not the kind of a person that should really be treated that way. So maybe that's their goal. But you know, someone else might say, oh, well, I'm actually scared. Uh, they tease me and I'm a little bit frightened or I feel really embarrassed or depressed. So I'm going to do withdraw. I really want to get out of this situation. That might be a different goal. The second person who saw the exact same event or uh, something that had to do with flitting might say, oh, wow, they seem pretty hot. I want to date them. So that might be their goal in this, uh, that situation. Uh, so their goals then lead off to a variety of possible responses and automatically in our brains we kind of scan all, all the things uh, we've done in that situation before and we think about all the things that we might be able to do. So uh, when thinking of all the possible responses, the first person might say, well, I could walk over and hit that person. I could scream out at them, you know, oh yeah, I kind of like don't do that to me. Or I could throw something at them or something like that. Um, well, the second person who thinks, oh, oh I think I'm being flirted with. And my goal here to, uh, is to try and get a date of, out of this. Uh, they might walk by that person and give them a smile back. They might scream out of them, uh, oh yeah, they might uh, go ahead um, uh, them their number or say uh, that uh, they want to text them or something like that. So usually after we scan all of the possible things we can do, we come up with our, with our response. We decide, okay, person number one says, I'm going to do full my book at them. Uh, person number two might say, well, I've decided I show uh, just smile at them. That's the best way to handle it. Interestingly, just because we decided on what it's that we are going to do, that doesn't mean that's actually what we do. Uh, a lot of us have really good intentions to, to do a certain thing, um, but when we actually go and do it, it comes uh, out a little bit different than we expected. So the person that decided to throw their book might decide to also scream out at the same time like that, uh, whereas uh, the second person might decide to smile back and also say something like, hey, how's going? or something like that. Uh, so all these steps are happening really, really quickly. And what's interesting is that the reason why all these things occur are because of the experience we've had before, and specifically the experiences we've had with popularity. Uh, what we've learned is that we can predict how people will encode this, uh, so they will interrupt this and so on. What goals they'll make and what responses they consider select and then act all based of, on how popular they were as young kids. 
uh, they, uh, that creates a template of way of us interacting with the world and with after effects of thousands thousand of times a day. Sometimes you think about this very seriously and very specifically. So for instance, imagine you have gone to, on a first day, there may be some of these steps that you have debated about and ruminated about forever. Uh, what did they mean by that text and does that mean they like me or they don't like me and what should I do? Should I say that back? Should I put a little emotion or does it seem I'm trying too hard? All of these ways uh, that I think really very specifically about these steps and even obsess uh, over it sometimes. And that shows us um, that we are really uh, engaging in these steps by remember most of the time it's happening automatically without us even realizing them. So here's an example. Before I ask you to watch a little video. Uh, the video in a had a box uh, and around the box uh, there were three circles of different colors. Uh, colors. It would have been perfectly appropriate to respond to what video uh, that w what you saw the three circles in a box. But most of, to, of tend to under promise that video, we tend to see a story. But what story we see, the way that we interpret the stimulus, tell us a lot about ourselves. I have shown this video to many, many people over these years and I want to give you a few examples of the way the people will worry when they ask to do the exact thing they just asked you to do. Uh, watch the video and just say what you saw. So, for instance, uh, some people will say in a more ne neutral way they they saw the red circle originally in a lid, but the blue circle followed. Uh, then red text green uh, who followed and even gained the lead. Blue was very far, far behind and was left out of entering the square because the door closed before he got here. For instance, another person said red and blue circles went, uh, went around the big circle one. They stopped. They picked up the green circle. All the circles went around the main circle ones. Finally, red and green entered and closed the door. They are pretty neutral responses. Look how this contrasts with folks that said something that indicated maybe a, a low level of aggression. What they said was the blue circle forced its way into a box, bounced it around for 5 seconds. Uh, around the red and green circles. Red and green ran out and closed the entrance of blue, or the blue circle tries to make others include him. Uh, he broke into the square and moved toward them. He threw himself against the slides of the square near where they are standing. Uh, the other circles don't join him, and they left the square. Here's an other one. Uh, blue forced its way into the room with gray, green and red. Blue and green bumped shoulders until green was ready to live with red because he didn't like hanging out with blue. Let me show you one more example. Here are people that saw the exact same video, but what they said suggests what even more dramatic aggression. Here's what one person said. Okay, so red and green circle are chilling in the room. I think red is female. Blue is angry and feels left out. Clearly blames the green circle for excluding it and breaks into the room. It looks like there was violence between green and blue circles. Another person said, blue banged on the door and forced it open. Blue is very mad, bouncing all over the place. Green faced up to blue, blue and green fought. Green and red left the room and closed the door on blue. You can take a look at some of this. Here's one of my favorite. Blue busted down the down and violent narcissistic rage and then provoked the green into a fight. A green was not in the mood for fighting because he was happy and friends with red. Um, red chilled in the corner, scared of blue. Uh, they green took uh, red out of the box. Uh, as you can see, there's different scenarios and the way that people are describing them suggests um, that there are all kinds of attributions that we make. Just by seeing a simple video in which we are encoded to the same information, uh, three circles in a box. But the way that we interpret that uh, um, um, is dramatically different. Some people thought uh, that they saw circles in a different genders. They assumed that uh, one was a male, one was a female. Some of them assumed a lot of aggression. Some thought uh, that uh, they were just playing. All of that has a lot to do with what works like for us growing up and new popular we hear. So overall, hopefully this information is showing you that popularity in fact really still does matter. It's mattering in a way that affecting every single social interaction that we have as adults little by little. 
uh, our social experiences comprise a central database. So the experiences we have in as adolescents, um, which we mostly care about popularity back then, um, the database tells us what we even see in the world around us, uh, what we hear, how we interpret that, uh, what go 